Hi and welcome back to SGTV. We are back here with Ben and Jen and me. I'm Ben again. <laughs> Sorry. But <laughs> I just like it. Anyway, um, so today's episode, um, by the way, for our audience who don't know Ben and Jen, we've got more episodes on the channel. Um, you guys are from Burton, you're part of, well, you are Aries Electrical, Yep. and uh, you've very kindly donated your time here today to come and chat with us, and yeah, it's been fun so far. Um, but anyway, we're going to be doing an episode now called um, Working in a Man's World, so a bit controversial, you might hear some like, ooh. Um, this is where I'll tell the truth about him. Yeah, that's it now. Me, you're getting me too now. Yeah, then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sleeping on the sofa tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, he doesn't live with me. Don't worry, I'm yeah, not gonna make him sleep on the sofa. Yeah, work, work wife is uh, stays at work. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's quite a serious subject, really. Yeah. Um, and I suppose this is mainly aimed towards towards you, Jen. Um, yeah. So before we get into sort of your experiences and, and things like that in, in the industry, um, what could you just tell us? I mean, you, you've mentioned before on on the show that you 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 cut from a a gym background, PT background and things like that, running your own business. But did you ever think you'd go, were, were there any careers that you felt like people expected you to go into? Uh, I mean, I did, obviously, I served in the armed forces for a bit. That was something everyone expected me to do. Um, I think just based on family history and stuff like that. I've always been a bit in a man's world when it comes to the sports I've played. Um, but I think everyone expected me to go down a bit of a sporty route because it's, it's all I did in school. It's, if I'm honest, it's how I got through because I wasn't the most academic of people. Um, I got by on my physical ability to be good at various sports. Um, so I think, yeah, that initially probably was a route that most people thought that I would go down yeah. um, and not surprised by it. And even now, I don't think when I say I'm retraining, I never really get, oh, my God, what's made you do that? It's, oh, yeah, I can see you doing that. So I think it is sort of a... It is something that people expect of me. Maybe not specifically electric. People who know you and people your who know me, yeah. yeah, know that I need to be doing something that's practical and a bit challenging. Yeah. Did you think you did you ever think you'd go into a different career? I'm, I'm trying not to stereotype, but people do have these kind of mentalities of of, of women going into certain roles. Was there yeah. any anything of that well, for you? Yeah, I'll be honest. At one point, I and it was another it was another job that I, I'd always sort of looked at uh, was nursing. Um, I always sort of thought oh, I'd love to go into that. It'd be quite nice. Um, after having my children, I went through quite a tough time with having them. They both uh, came sort of a bit early. The first one in particular was quite early and we went through sort of the neonates. She went back for various operations in paediatrics. And I thought, Do you know what, I could, I could be that person that works in paediatrics. Um, but to be honest, work-life balance, it was just a job that was never going to work for me. It wouldn't have mattered how much I wanted it. Uh, you know, people say, oh, but if you really want it, you'll do it. Well, yeah. And there's always shifts involved. To a certain extent. But, you know, like I've said before in previous episodes, I don't want to work weekends. I don't want to work evenings because I've done all that in fitness. So it kind of, apart from the money aspect of it, which if I'm quite honest, after looking at the salaries, it, it's not even that much better. Why would I go from what I'm trying to get away from into something else that is going to give me that same... Same shift, same sort of yeah. money, same sort of... So if I was to go for a girly job, I suppose, that would probably have been the only one that I ever would have gone towards, I think. Yeah. But even then now, look how many male nurses. Some of the best paediatric nurses we've had have been males Yeah. when working with my kids. I don't know if it's our generation now, but I, I really, off the top of my head, I couldn't point at a job or an industry and say that's more men, that's more women. You know, realistically, about everything you, you see people doing, you see both genders doing. It's funny, actually, because my husband's in the submarine service and up until sort of the last few years, females couldn't be submariners. Oh, OK. Um, and it's something they've brought on and he has worked quite, um, he plays quite a big part in the submarine uh, escape training and, and the centre that they run and stuff like that. And uh, he was saying he loves it. He thinks it's great Like there's more and more women coming through. And he says, but it has had to alter a lot of the way that they sort of behave yeah. and things like that. But he says it's not because they're females. It's because it's got to become a more professional environment because there are things that just aren't appropriate regardless. Yeah. Um, but he said it, it's making a massive impact on the way that people are doing things and thinking about stuff within the, the service. And, and it's all for the he's right seen it as a positive, yeah. So what made you want to become an electrician then? Uh, I think it's just something I've always had. A, I've, I've always wanted to be in a trade. 
And I'll be honest, and I know a lot of people will probably uh, fall out me over this, but I did my initial, I was going to look at plumbing. Um, that was the initial start. And then when I, looked bed, into, just... <laughs> when I looked into what was going into plumbing, I decided that my stomach perhaps couldn't cope with some of the plumbing side of things. And it's all right, people saying, yeah, but you can pick and choose your jobs. Well, not really initially when you start. You've got to do what you're training to do. And I just thought, no, my stomach can't do that. Yeah, that's but a I soil stack, wanna, that's yours. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought, no, that's not for me. I've done dirty nappies. I've got a special needs child that still at the age of five, I'm having to deal with that. I don't want to have to go to work and deal with it as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just thought, no. So then so then electrics I looked into. And actually, the, the, the training team that I spoke to, I spoke to a careers advisor there first and, and we spoke. And it, it, they were really good because he, he got Darren in, my husband, on the conversation as well. He says, I want to speak to you all because I want to make sure it's going to work as a family. And we discussed and he sort of said to me, yeah, I think from everything you've said, electrical is your way. And then he sort of said, this is why I think it will fit with your family. What do you think? Which one are you going to choose? And that was yeah. electrics. Although electrics was something I wanted to do when I left school, but didn't it do it. So it, it basically now. came back to it yeah. in the end. So for me, it was always going to be probably that route. It was just exploring other things along the way. So what about you though, Ben? So you were, were you looking for um, a, an electrician's mate, apprentice helper or anything like that? Or I wasn't actually looking um, for anybody really at the time. I'd just come away from having, I went through a phase through COVID where we had a, a, quite a few of us working in a team doing quite a lot of jobs because of how busy we were. And a PA running the booking the jobs in and then a team of about maybe I think it was about six of us in total um, and I'd it got to the point where I couldn't ensure that that quality of work was there um, just because of how busy we were and everything else so I took a step back downsized we grew too quick really when I first set up so I downsized it kind of just got back to it was just myself and another lad um, a young chap who uh, then finally he was struggling with his qualifications just took a step back with um, work so he could focus more on getting his quals kind of sorted and catch up with the college work so I was just coming out the back end of that really and I wasn't, I wasn't particularly looking but I was always helpful to have another pair of hands on the job always and you know as long as the work's there it's you know helpful so when I was again scrolling through Instagram flicking through all these Insta famous Sparkies, you know, for, to see what I can improve on. Um, I come across Spark and Ninja and that one to one apprentices because I'd actually been in touch with them, uh, that apprentice one to one, a couple of times, um, and I'd had a couple of um, interviews with some other respective um, lads who just didn't. And I wanted someone that could, I could really get on with on site, and you know, you and I enjoyed my job quite a lot, but I need to enjoy who I'm working with as well because that can really change yeah. the way you know, your work um, life is, you know. So I wanted someone that I could really get on with and, and kind of had something in common with. So you know, I didn't care about sex. It means nothing to me, you know, whether you're a female or a male, end up there, the job needs doing. And if you can you can do the job or you're willing to learn the job, then that's all I care about, end of day. And I think that's many people's opinion now, which is mm, great to true, see, true, you know. True, yeah. we, get, we get quite a lot of um, good comments from you, really. Um, we'll go on sites where people aren't expecting when you see electricians to come in and uh, you'll go on sites where you know building contractors are in and they'll see myself and they're like oh hello and then they're a bit like tucking back when they see Jen walk in with you know all the tools yeah. falling out of pockets ready to ready to I crack on. I think it can play to your advantage as well because I know um, Kathy from um, oh I'm going to be in trouble here now for forgetting the company name um Little Miss Electrical. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. She, she was telling me before how um, her sort of niche of having a, a the majority of her team a female helps because if they're dealing with, say, an elderly lady who's a client, that elderly lady might feel a bit more comfortable having a female in the yeah. in the, in a house working on. Um, not to say that you can't trust. No, no. Because you know that's the whole rabbit hole you don't want to go yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. But, you, but you can understand how people can feel about certain people being in the house, the way certain people look. I've you know. been in those situations where clients, you know, you, end of the day, when you're going into somebody's house, you're in their home, you're in their place where they feel safe. So you've got to try and show that person without knowing them, without being unprofessional, that I am a safe person to be around and that I'm trustworthy and I'm here to help you, not to rob you and disappear, you know? Mm. 
Uh, I think as well, because you remember you had a, a women's institute as well, didn't you, that you were doing some work with at some point? Yeah. And you said it would have actually been really helpful if back then you'd have yeah, had a female yeah. just we're, solely because of the vulnerable women that he was dealing with. Because we saw some of the women are some of the things that they've been through. They, you oh, know, you they, they couldn't even be around another bloke, which is how that affects them mentally. And I think back then, even if I had a, a female on the team, then that would have been amazing. We didn't end up carrying on work for them because I felt like I didn't want to upset that you know, apple cart yeah. as such, you know, so, but then you're, you've you actually, if anything, helped the business because it kind of shows that, you know, the whole, whole equality and diversity thing, end of day, that's just how it should be. There shouldn't be a, exactly, yeah. a, yeah. a, a thing that people have to learn. It's just, it's, you shouldn't have to it learn. Shouldn't, it shouldn't, shouldn't be yeah, an that, issue. It shouldn't yeah. be a thing. You yeah, should just know. Yeah, you should just know. And everyone should have the same rights. But uh, it's something I've said to people when they've asked about Jen working for me, except, and they've said, like, well, if she was, she was a bloke, uh, with with what she can do now, what she could do before even, and with all her skill sets and the tools and everything else that she has, she'd have been snapped up a long ago, you know. And I find myself very lucky the fact that I've, I have her, but I know I'm very much aware of the fact that the reason I have her is because she's a female, because she's not had the opportunities that she would have had if she was a male. And to me, it is gutting to hear that because outside of work, Jen and I have become quite good friends as well. Um, but yeah, it is. It's upsetting to see because it, ain't, it, it isn't fair, and it's that's happening to you. That's happening to a lot of other women out out there trying to get you know young girls to you know ladies who are retraining who are you know late in late in the game or whatever. And that it is heart wrenching to hear that people are struggling like that to get get work in a male dominant industry, which it is sadly because it shouldn't be. It doesn't matter what sex you are. At the end of the day, if you you can do the job. Should have the same opportunities as everybody else. Yeah. That's what she matters to me. So, what, what's your experience has been like, good and bad? I think that if we could start with, so we finish on a high. Let's if you can tell me some some of your negative experiences you faced. Yeah, I think probably some of the things that, and I say this like I think some guys don't realise what they're doing. It's ignorance um, and getting used to having females in the trade. Uh, some of the things are, for example, if I pick up a power tool and somebody says to me, do you want me to do that for you? That's quite like, well, not really. Do you want me to do your washing up for you? Do you know what I mean? Like, I find that quite offensive because I think, but sometimes I have to take that step back and think, right, they, they probably are don't realize not realising what, what they're they? doing. Yeah. And it's like, well, I've just picked up my own SDS. I've just picked up my own drill. I've just picked up my own multi-tool. They're mine. So actually, I can use those yeah. <laughs> and I don't need you to do it for me. Um, so there's that aspect of it is always being offered to do it. Um, Ben's approach is if he thinks that I might struggle with something or I might be, he might say to me, right, how are you going to do that? If I was you, try it like this. And that's really different to someone saying, do you want me to do that for you? Because that yeah. is saying, I can help you do that if you're unsure. Whereas the other one is saying, you're not capable of doing that. Can I add on to that as well? I think as a learner, you forget about the, the women side of thing, being a woman, as a learner, you don't want someone to do that for you. Yeah. You sometimes need to struggle in, for example, we were fitting um, some smoke alarms and they can be quite tricky because the terminals are quite small inside yeah. and there's not a lot of room to play with. I particularly struggle with them. I might have fell out with it a couple of times. Yeah, right? yeah. There was a couple of disagreements. There was a couple <laughs> of fag breaks I needed to be happen. You know. And I don't even smoke. Yeah, but... She got there in the end, but that wasn't because she was a woman. That was because she's a learner who's learning yeah. to do the job. And then to then have someone come over and be like, do you want help with that, babe? And it's a bit like, no, she doesn't want help. She needs to learn and she needs to struggle to learn yeah. and yeah. find that way around it and to problem solve. Because our job is literally, I'd say 60% problem solving, if yeah. not more. You know, as an electrician or anybody in the trade, you are constantly reacting to certain situations because not every job's the same. So you've got to learn that ability to be able to do that. And that starts from the little things of struggling with an SDS or struggling to make off that smoke. Yeah. You know, but Which, to be fair, we went back the following week and I did another smoke and I did it in less than half the time. So yeah. I'd figured my way of doing it. It was just, and to be fair, it was end of the day, weren't it? It was yeah, the last yeah, job, yeah. so you're sort of tired and... It was just like, but I, I managed to do it and it was nice then to go back the following week and do another one and it actually be fine and yeah. I didn't find it that difficult. Just going back to sort of the, you know, people offering, like, do you want me to do that for you? 
it's a tricky one, isn't it? And I'm not, I'm not excusing that by yeah. any means. I'm sort of thinking some people, like you say, they're probably doing it innocently, just trying to be nice because mm. people have been raised to to think, oh, I'll I'll be helpful. Yeah, yeah. And but and th there's nothing wrong with that, but you've got to apply it right, haven't yeah. you? If you're if you're stepping in and being, oh, do you want me to do that? Yeah. Think about what you I you're saying. I think of how you're saying it as yeah. well, because sometimes if it comes across quite, which this is the probably the negative experience I've had is that. Do you want me to just do that for you? Yeah. No, I don't want you to just do that for me. I want you to maybe, if you can see that there is an easier way of doing that, say to me, try this. But no, I don't want you to just take over something because that yeah. defeats the object of me yeah. learning how to do it. And that's the thing that no I'm most, most upset about when I see those situations is I, want, I need you, as, as an employer, yeah. need you to learn those things because I will need the, you to have that ability yeah. to eventually go, Jen, can you crack on with those? Bits yeah. and bobs, please, and you and know that you've got the yeah. capability to and that's do that. That's a brilliant way of learning, regardless of your of yeah, gender. Yeah. That's just a good way yeah. of learning. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. However, sadly, you know, without pulling the female card, it the reason that question was asked to me in this particular situation was because I'm a female, hundred um, percent. It was yeah. just unfortunately sometimes you have to work with people like that but like you've both said sometimes they will just do that to you as a learner but then that's where younger even male apprentices come in and like you know then they can feel the same way that I probably feel because they're probably just thinking well they're doing that because I'm young yeah. so, the thing is so, I'd never had that when I was when I was being taught yeah. and I got taught by multiple electricians so I had many I had great sense of like of a of somewhere to, to learn from you know I, I, I had a big pool of education to go from from from, from it all but not once does someone turn around to me and go, do you want me to do that? In a, in a, in a, in a, in a frustrative and, and kind of, um, what's the word? Impatient way. Mm. It's, you need to learn that because you need to know your job and you need to understand where you're yeah. going wrong. And sometimes the best way to do that is not for me to sit there until I'm blue in the face and tell you, it's for you to learn that yourself. Yeah. And, and I never had that. So when I recognised that it was happening, straight away I knew it was because you know, whether that was subconsciously or consciously, it was because she was a female. Mm. And you can get people who are what who in a safe, controlled environment, they'll sit and watch you happily do something wrong and then be like, Okay, you've done that wrong. Yeah. Undo it and I'll tell you the right way. Well, that's pretty much what you've done with me, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because sometimes you need to learn from the the, the wrong way and mm. you know well, we had it with that switch when he said, I think I know what you've done with that switch, but I want you to go over, open the back of it. Come back and tell me what you've done. Right? Yeah, we'd, we'd powered up a, a, yeah. a, a lighting circuit and the um, switch was turning on the wrong way around. So okay. instead of it being off, it was actually on in the off position. So um, it was a two way switch. So I knew straight away she'd probably either crossed over the common and the um, the L1, the switch live, or she'd um, connected up the common and the right one, the permanent live, and then put the switch live into L2. So I said, I've yeah. got, I've got, I know what you've done straight away, but Go back, and go, go back, have a look at it, and let me know what you think it is. And straight away, she went over there, looked at it, and went, oh, yeah, I'll put it in the L2 instead of L1. That's why it's switching that way. Yeah. yeah. You could have left it. I mean, like, it's, the switch works. Yeah, but it's yeah. just, again, yeah. having that it's bit of knife worshipmanship as well. Bit, yeah. yeah. I think, so there's that, but then I think the other, the other thing I've experienced is um, constantly being questioned, not just myself, but Ben gets it as well, like questioned about me and my work instead of somebody just worrying about what they're doing. So if, if you've been put on a job there and then Jen's been put on a job there, stop asking questions about what Jen's doing, how she's doing it, because actually yeah. that's nothing to do. So there's with no you. excuse for that really, is no. there? No. But then on top of that, speaking to other tradespeople in the environment and basically telling them that my work isn't very good and that I'm too slow, et cetera, and stuff like that, that's been quite a big thing for me recently. And I'll be honest, at, at one point it did give me a bit of a wobble. I didn't want to go back to the site. Because I was a bit like, well, if I'm going to get questioned every two minutes over something, then what's the point? Yeah. Questioning how much I'm being paid and things like that. It's nothing to, and then in my head, I'm like, it's nothing to do with them. Ben's not unhappy with me. It still He's, knocks your confidence though, doesn't it? But if yeah, people are, and if it people does, are and that, I'll be honest, that's the first time it's ever really bothered me because I'm very open to the fact I am going into a, a man's world. I am very open to the fact that there is going to be some friction in that world of becoming a female in it. And that is unfortunately normal and I can take that that doesn't bother me but when it kind of becomes a bit personal and it's starting to because for all I know you know that builder might turn around to Ben and say oh I'm not giving you another job if you bring in her 
But then that impacts his business, which isn't very well, good. Well, this is where I that's need the to kind of person you don't want to be working well, for exactly. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, as a as a business, you know, away from being your friend as well mm. as an employer, you know, kind of as a as a business, do I want to be working for people, or do do I want to be one allowing Jen to go under that you know prejudice under us? Because frank, frankly, if I'm allowing her to go to sites like that, mm. then I'm as bad as them in my eyes, and that's what I need to. As, a, as an employer, and I think other employers need to, to look at, is if they're putting their, 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 um, their learners or their, their employees who are female in those situations, that's something we need to work on as, as, as a collective to, to either stamp that out and have that conversation, whether it be difficult or not, and say, why is this happening on your sites? This needs to not happen. And if we lose work because of it, then fine. Well, I don't want to be working with that person. If that's the type of work environment, because it's uncomfortable for me to be around as well. Because you don't want to know what to say. Because you want to get paid from the job, and you want you don't want to upset the person that's, you know, that's employing you to do the work. But also as well, if they're the ones that are causing that issue, I don't want to be working for that person. No. The same as you wouldn't yeah. for a normal employee, a manager within an office role. Yeah. You'd be going straight to HR to talk to. Talk. I mean, luckily to be fair, that that this particular builder, he sort of said to, you only spoke to him was it yesterday or today? And he'd yeah, this morning actually. Yeah. Good everything was and sort of oh she's worth a money type thing that was quite nice to hear because it was yeah. like well actually regardless of a certain individual it's not changed actually yeah. the thing and that sort of picked me back up and made me feel a bit more comfortable about going back to that site now yeah and that's nice that's not just mm. a, another electrician saying yeah. that that's a builder that's someone who sees yeah. the whole yeah, lot yeah that's, saying that. that's where that's i turned yeah. around and said well you may only think that she's worth on this occasion who's only worth 50 pounds a day i wouldn't pay her any more than that because she stands around a lot and this and that and that's when I turned around and said, yeah, but you don't understand that. Once she's, for me, a learner's a future investment because you may pay them less now or pay them a, a good rate now, but it means that once they're qualified, they've got that loyalty to you because you've always looked after them. So as long as you pay someone right and the money's never an issue, then that's never going to be an issue in the forward. So they're always going to work for you yeah. and, work, and, work, and work for you rather than just go to work, do the job and go home. And that kind of, I think that helps with that. But also... You know, you don't see what she does in the background. All this social media stuff. I mean, we're here today because of Jen, because of you know the, her, you've been really active on the LinkedIn and social media and stuff like that. That's obviously having a impact on on our company and and, and giving us a good face towards um, customers. A good you know, it's, it's straight away kind of people see that and they they get reassured that we're we're you know we 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 can do what we can do yeah. right. You know, and we yeah. can we trust it. I mean, you've just hi highlighted a few positives there, but are, are there any positives that sort of jump out for you? Jen? Yeah, I think probably. I mean, <laughs> I, I just like, I don't want to keep digging at this one person, but sadly it is the only negative person yeah. I've had to work with. But for example, we, we've done a little bit of work where we've both had to do the same job in a different room and we've gone back to test and the job that he did didn't work and the job that I did did. So I must admit, there was a lot of satisfaction that, of that came yeah. back from that. And I said to you, didn't I? I said, I'm like quietly smug here. But actually, but that made me, that also picked me up because it's like, it's okay, he can say what he wants. But at the same time, I've just done a job yeah. that is of a good standard and it works. Proofs in the pudding. So yeah, actually, exactly. yeah, that, that was a big pick me up. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, when you go on to sites, especially um, the one where we've we've got like a really, we've got a really good um rapport with the customer, the one we were saying in a previous episode about the fact she's asked us to come for a barbecue after her renovation's done and stuff. Like that site there, that company in particular, that building company that we're working sort of alongside there, yeah. they've been great when Fantastic, it comes to me. Yeah. And they're like so positive and like every time they go, oh yeah, it's great, oh we love it seeing you and like, that's really nice because yeah. you know what, that, that particular company has a mixture of really young lads in training. They range from like little literally young lads that are like 16 in training like training to be plasterers or car whatever it is that they're doing right up to like old guys with no tickets as he says i've got no tickets but i've been doing it for years and like they all think it's great don't they yeah. they all pray it. they're all like yeah this is great oh we love it that you come on and then they're dead impressed at all the stuff that you yeah. do and like they don't even quit and then they just talk to me like i'm any other person they don't sorry should be yeah. it shouldn't be and you don't be a... feel like you just feel like you belong there and they've been really really good haven't they on that we've, we've, we've come across quite a lot of sites like that really yeah especially um a lot of the time when we're just working for private customers going direct to yeah. to uh people's houses etc to when they're living yeah. yeah i think if anything it kind of uh is a bit of a reassurance 
yeah. having you there as well as me. It kind of helps yeah. diffuse any situations or any preconceived like trust issues because at the end of the day, people need to trust what you, yeah. you're doing. As you said before, it's difficult, isn't it? Regardless of who you are, going into someone's house where it's you know their safe haven yeah. to charge them money for tearing up their house and putting it back together as best as you can, yeah. it, it's a difficult situation and yeah. you know for anyone really. Yeah. Um, do you, have you noticed in more female um, tradespeople getting into into uh, the trades? Well, I think social media wise, I'm I'm seeing a lot more. I'm having a lot more uh, female tradespeople connect with me probably from my own platform that I've started to develop up on there um especially on Instagram but um I haven't actually really worked with we've not really been to any sites where there's been other females no no we haven't I've, I've actually you're the only female I've come across on on sites since my career at least yeah. which is another reason why I'm trying to really be a bit of an advocate for it because it's you know, it's it's nice to see yeah. having you on site and that it adds a bit of difference to the site, but it also changes up the norm. Yeah. And I think that's why other people buzz off it because it changes, you know, the odd joke here or there, and the yeah. banter's a little bit different. But we all have a bit of a crack, and but it's a bit of, bit of diversity it doesn't doesn't do any harm at all. You know? No, but yeah, as as it comes to actually working with people, no, I've not not, not come much, across no. it yet. No, do I don't think... know whether that's because there's not many in the area. Or yeah, maybe uh, possibly that we're working in. I, I honestly don't know. Um, Do collabs with uh, any of the female sparks out there yeah. if you want to. You know, yeah. we're, we're, we're going. I think um, <laughs> it's definitely it, it is on the increase, but yeah, you know, it's a it's a it's a, a big industry. Big place, there's a lot of people. So. It's you know, there's going to be a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot have to come in. I think for it to be more visibly noticeable in general, just in everyday walking around, seeing people walk around in you know, like the the combats and stuff like that. I think there is going to have to be a big increase in it, but I think it will happen. I definitely, I'm quite positive about it happening, just seeing it more and more over social media. That seems to be the thing now. I'm particularly enjoying watching a lot of the female sparks at the minute. I mean, I think Kimmy the Spark is one that yeah, I she cracks me particularly right like watching on But she's really Instagram. good as well, though, because, you know, even if she doesn't reply to you for a few days, you get some that you'll message and you'll ask or you'll comment on something. She will always reply no matter what. We've seen her rock up to site with a little JCB drill in a handbag and she pulls up and she gets out all the tools out of a normal yeah. handbag and she's got her earrings on and she's feeling herself and what she's yeah. wearing. But like, that's you. That's and great. Yeah, that's you can apply like your real. character. She's probably that's one you know of the most I mean? real that you'll see on there. Definitely. I, I, I rate that yeah. a lot, you know. But not, again, not just her. Like, There's other sparks that, yeah. are, that are doing it out there that are, that are female that are, you know, that are being themselves, not having to change for the industry, but helping to change the industry yeah. and for, for me that's yeah there's a couple of important. local ones he's sort of london isn't there there's a couple of local ones i follow um i think most people know sort of amy and gina they they run their own youtube they've got quite a funny channel going on but you learn stuff from theirs but i quite like watching their stuff as well the way that they go in and work alongside other trades and obviously gina works with her dad as well so yeah. it's nice to see that he's pushing it because I've got friends that's dads just would never accept that they wanted to do something like that. So yeah, it's nice to see that as well. My re, dad's really good. Yeah, yeah he's, a re, he's a you know he's a top bloke as well. Your dad, <laughs> he's a funny chap, but he's also since uh, since day dot when she when she started with us, he does he's in health and safety I think. Yeah, he's so he's like straight supported. away. You got that PPE for it. I want that right mask and the goggles and yeah. that. But he's, he's he was there. Just... He's chasing me up for a drill now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he wants because yeah, yeah. he needs yeah. a more powerful one. He's like, girl, have you got a drill for me? Yeah. <laughs> It's great to see that, like you yeah. say, with with YouTube and social media, you see, you know, it's it's helping inspire. And we've had um, we've spoken to a few um, younger girls on on the show, um, Tiana, Caitlin. There's quite a few, yeah. and it's it's good to see. And the, I think the more people that watch actual people doing it, yeah. it's going to inspire them. It's going to think, oh, if they can do it, why why can't I? Yeah. And hopefully, those preconceived, you know barriers are just gonna come down when when you yeah. see people like yourself I think they will and, gradually i think it is going to be a generation change over as this happens, yeah it's not an overnight thing but it'll get there yeah i think well, especially if we keep pushing it the way that we're pushing it absolutely yeah um before we finish this episode have you got any advice you want to relay to any female electricians or prospective female electricians uh i think it's i do think it's just really important to to know your worth know that do you know what doesn't matter whether you're 15, uh, 15, you're obviously not going to be going into the industry at that age. doesn't matter whether you're like 16, 17, 21, in your 30s. 
it honestly doesn't matter. Just know your worth because you're not worth any less than anybody else of that age that is male going into that industry. And anybody worth working for will not look at you like a female coming in. They will just look at you as somebody that's retraining or starting out. And I've learned that. And I've learned it with Ben, but I've also learned it with obviously working alongside other trades. I mean, even we've got a guy um, that's a, a gas fitter that we've done some stuff with. And, and he's taken me labouring on his jobs because he's seen what I can do and he's gone, actually, I could use yeah. you. So when there's been no work, if Ben's been down south, I've gone and done bits of plumbing, soldering and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it just shows that diverse. even somebody that's never met you, just seen your work, they've gone, oh, yeah, you'd be useful to me. So That's rewarding in yeah, itself, isn't definitely. it? Yeah, so, yeah, so 100%, just, just know your worth. Don't ever feel like, because, you know, like I say, I felt a little bit like it in that particular situation that maybe I wasn't going to be able to do this, but it just proves in a in a later scenario that actually I was. So, yeah. yeah, I think definitely just just never degrade yourself or put yourself any lower than a male or or anybody anybody it doesn't matter who it is. I couldn't really. agree more, really. Yeah. And pe having people like Ben, regardless yeah. of your gender as well, just having people like you yeah. that are giving any people opportunities and yeah, being true. being a, a good boss and supportive and I think that that's it all helps, doesn't it? I think that's yeah. the main thing. I think for any employer out there who's looking at taking on or even actively, you know, trying to hire, especially female sparks, you know, you just got to give them that opportunity because the opportunity isn't there at the minute. Uh, I've not seen it, you know, I've seen you when I've been working away and the work's not been local to home, especially this year, we've worked a lot away at the minute. You haven't been able to jump on the job. So you've been looking for work to kind of feed in the, you know, the subcontracting role kind of at home to try and just fill the gaps. And she's just not getting those opportunities from people who are actively looking for good people and they don't realise how much they're missing. Mm -hmm. To the point where I've seen companies on, especially like LinkedIn or Instagram, message um, Jen on like, so they can be seen on, on the comments to say, message me and we'll, we'll have a chat. But then completely ignore her yeah. because... That happens a lot. And it's just because they want people to see them yeah, on the yeah. feed. Yeah, but they're not interested at all in taking yeah. it. I feel like for, swearing right now. But yeah, yeah. No, but for, for <laughs> me... That happens a lot. Happens for me, as, as, as someone who runs a company and is, 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 is actively trying to employ, you know, people like Jen, it doesn't matter about their sex. It doesn't matter about what gender they, they're under. Yeah. You know, you've, you've got to give those people their own opportunities because how else are we going to change the industry to being more accepting and to more you know, influence the, the younger generation because I want my son to grow up in a time where we're not having to have this discussion. No. I want him to grow up knowing that this is, this, there isn't such thing as equality and diversity because it, it just is. And that, that's what I want, for, especially for our kids growing up at least. You feel like banging your head against a brick wall, don't you? You know, for people like that who are probably crying out for, for help, for, for yeah, yeah. good staff, yeah. you know, they've probably got jobs booked up and they, they just don't have the staff and there are women in front of them who could yeah. fill that job but they're just looking past it it's this particular this particular company that i saw it as well they 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 their following's really good on on social media yeah. and they're you know they're a good company within the within your area they're doing really well you know it seems like a good company to work for but it's just like for me that's it's such a wrong thing to do you know you're going to try and benefit of someone who's you know wanting work wanting to work hard and not even given that opportunity i mean at least like i'm here really here today because obviously jen but like i'm doing what i can for for not just yourself but anybody that wants to come into the industry you know mm. so yeah yeah well, I want to thank you both for coming on again. Yeah. It's always yeah, a pleasure always. having you in the studio. Um, and hopefully we'll get to see you again soon. You're, yeah. you're local, so hopefully come pop in. See us more often. Find yeah. out. Maybe they, maybe they can come to us. Yeah, yeah. you have to come on site. Yeah, we, yeah we're quite That'd excited be. about these uh, Elysium boards with the uh, yeah, AFDDs. Yeah. So. yeah, that might be one to look out for. Yeah, we'll have to yeah, definitely. keep tuned for that one. So as always, thank you both. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Um, always make sure you like, subscribe, notification button below. You'll see more of Ben, Jen and Ben. It's got <laughs> such a ring to it, that has. That's it now, that's, that's us. Yeah. All right then, see you next time. Thank you. Cheers.